so we are going live uh, with the Lesson Day Podcast, podcast number 17. Apolitical games are ruining video games. Or apolitical stories ruin storytelling in video games. Because, of course, I made it the largest and longest title possible. <laughs> and a very convenient to read. Uh, if you're figuring we're going to be talking about uh, Ubisoft, then you are correct. But before we do that, we have a lot of room to cover, including uh, hot tub streamers and some other stuff that I think you'll find interesting. So uh, let's get started, shall we? Uh, let me make sure that this is loading as well, because Twitch is being a pain in the buttocks. So here we are. We are live. Uh, so let's start with uh, the news. Uh, let's start with that. Let's just get into it. Uh, this is from uh, that was uh, two days. Uh, no, well, it was the twenty first. Uh, so during this week, uh, earlier this week, Twitch says being seen as sexy isn't against the rules. Creates dedicated category for hot top streamers. Uh, after months of controversy stemming from perceived loophole. Uh, in Twitch attire and sexual conduct rules, the company has created a dedicated section for pools, hot tubs, and beaches. In a new blog post, Twitch announced that it would create a new category, pool, hot tubs, and beaches. Previously, the hot tub streamers like used to call catch all, all just chatting category with like some streamers and viewers to accuse them of somehow breaking the rules. Despite the fact that they were no actually breaking Twitch rules, in the blog post, Twitch clarified this. Well, we have guidelines about sexual suggested content being found to be sexy by others and against our rules, and Twitch will not take, take enforcement action against women or anyone on our, our service with a perceived attractiveness. The company wrote out in discourage harassment against all streamers, regardless of their actions or intentions, under our current nudity and attire and sexually suggested content policies, treating their being swimwear in contextually appropriate situations at the beach, in a hot tub, for example, and we allow creative expressions like body writing and body painting, provided the seamless appropriate coverage as outlined by our attire policy. And we'll see that you cover your nips, uh, you're good to go. Yeah, uh, I, and I think that I think the whole nip thing too only applies to women. Mostly, yeah. Yeah, because if you're a man, you can show all the nips you want. Uh, yeah. As uh, soon as, I guess, uh, was it Laura K. Dale that advised uh, James Stephanie Sterling? It's like, uh, it, most rules is like, if you consider yourself a woman, then automatically TOS. Mm -hmm. Those nips be TOS. Yeah. Uh, this is, it comes from a situation that I saw on, on, on Twitter earlier. Uh uh, because a particular streamer, uh, she goes by the, uh, the the name, and her name is Kathleen Siragusa, uh, Siragusa uh, also known as Amaranth, uh, is, uh, and she's a cosplayer and streamer, and she complained that essentially she had been shadow banned and that uh, Twitch had indefinitely suspended the advertising on my channel uh, without actually informing her. So that happened. And uh, apparently, the the whole of the reaction to that was such that they eventually Twitch decided, no, no, we're gonna we're gonna have this new category. Uh, but they didn't cut her off completely, right? Uh, you could, you know, people could still donate to her or subscribe, whatever. They would get that yeah. money, but the advertising uh, side of things, that's something they were not getting money from. So. Um, so that those are the two uh, stories back to back, um, and and to me, I mean, my opinion. I was we were talking about this as the podcast was starting. It's simple, you know. Um, I think a lot of people who complain about this are mostly dudes on the on the internet, or not, not many times not even fellow uh, streamers, just people who complain like, you know, how dare you? You know, this is this is giving unfair advantage. To women, you know, the whole idea that women or attractive women have an unfair advantage because... Yeah, but, but then heaven forbid, oh my god, they're taking my boobies away out of my video games. Exactly. So really, it's all about control and uh, someone not being able to monetize their body. I mean, we monetize everything else. I mean, her presence. I would say she's monetizing her presence on the internet, right? And And, yeah. and Twitch is driven by personality. I mean, let's be honest. A lot of people on the internet are thirsty mother motherfuckers. It's just, just the way it is. So, yep. you know, either the content is is if it's your thirst or your you know what you look at. To you personally, I think I would be bored about five minutes after. It's like, oh, 
Yeah. She's in underwear, bikini, whatever. I mean, I guess okay. he, some, if, if a guy... Yeah, she, yeah she's if being it, boring. Yeah, yeah if, if, if she's not saying something interesting to me, I don't know, discussing, I, I'm you know... I'm, it's like, I'm the same with, like, dudes. It's like, <laughs> this guy's, cute, like, handsome and he has a nice voice, but he's not really saying anything interesting, so I'm just going to go somewhere else. And for people who do, probably they also subscribe to their OnlyFans and, this is, you know, her calendars and all that, so it's just part of that community, right? And Twitch didn't want to... You know, they didn't want to lose that money. You know, she's one of the most popular streamers. I think it's more problematic the sort of not clear guidelines, right? The fact that they, yeah. you know, just if you don't want that and you're on Twitch, just say so. We don't want this. Period. But they, uh, but they, they try to have their cake and eat it. Codes like, well, we don't want to say no to this content. Like, okay, so we don't want to be an adult porn site because that scares away advertisers. However, we do want to be a little titillating because. That draws in audiences for said con like audience like a uh, advertiser. So they're they're sort of like they want to try to balance that out. But like of course they also don't want to say it. <laughs> like like how do we balance this properly? Um, I think this too is just like they're I don't know. It's uh, the fact that it's like essentially it's almost like them the weird category thing is like oh we're gonna like sort of make a sexy time category without saying a sexy calling it that almost uh and as someone as some people br brought out which is probably another like news story is that oh you guys were able to shuffle all of this you were kind of quick to make this uh hot tub category but you know the thing that we've been asking for for years about like you know identity tags and stuff you can't do mm -hmm. because titillation is sells I, I wouldn't say that sex sells that's yeah. i think that titillation sells like the, the mm -hmm. all the possibility oh it must happen that actually sells more than the actual sell you know sex is like oh so much naked naked okay oops my nip slipped i guess i had to delete this vod but lucky for you boys who were here in the chat when it happened i guess yeah so yeah i don't i mean i'm not i'm not here gonna police anybody's bodies right Sorry, guys, you're not going to see me rocking it by Nana Hammock anytime soon. I thought about uh, that for an exercise stream, <laughs> but I think that would be against TOS. Probably, yeah. Uh, not because actually of body parts, but because you also would be a, a, a LGBTQ uh, TA. Uh, so I was like, oh, we can't have that, 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 we can't have. I was like, mm -hmm. dude, what? So if he says that he's straight, he can rock the upper banana hammock, but if he says that he's not or that he can't. Yeah. Uh, and this is the problem. So YouTube has done the same thing. Uh, I see a lot of, because uh, I, 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 I'll be honest, I follow a lot of cosplayers on Twitter. Um, you know, I, I like what I like, you know. I don't, I don't repost most of their stuff, but I follow them. And I know several uh, of them have complained that YouTube and Instagram and other places regularly. So like, oh. Not this person, but it seems, especially in Instagram, it really depends of who the person is and how famous they are, mm -hmm. right? If if you have somebody who is really a, a, an A-list celebrity on Instagram, oh no, they can they they can't be naked necessarily, but they can wear some very risque stuff. Yeah. But if you're someone else, a B, D, C, D, E, you know, lower down the the alphabet of celebrity, the more likely they go like, oh no, you can't be there. So so yeah, again, it's it's like, it, it's like the um. When WAP came out, the music video is fully a thing on YouTube, and it has full advertisement on it. But uh, so that titillate incredibly sexual and titillate, titillating without being you know borderline X rated uh, is perfectly fine and safe for advertiser stuff. But uh, talking about gay issues and LGBTQ community stuff, no, oh no, 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 that's not advertiser friendly at all. Mm -hmm. So you know, I guess you can't lose those chicka field box, I suppose. You know? mm -hmm. uh, so there you go. So I mean, be consistent. That's yeah. my my take on it is be consistent, right? Uh, and if people don't like it, yeah, it's a private service. You can go somewhere else, either because someone is wearing very little clothing or completely buttoned up. And by the way, we all know that women, and especially uh, especially women, and um, you know, like they can be completely buttoned up, and they 
can get bombarded in the chats going like, oh, but bots and like that. Like, um, I don't want to single out anybody, but Jesse uh, Gender over YouTube, she was doing it. Uh, uh, I didn't watch it because it was pretty late at night, but she was doing a Mass Effect 2 Legendary Edition stream. And then a bunch of people just showed up with uh, bots, basically, you know, showing uh, homophobic and uh, transphobic mm. stuff, right? It isn't that she was naked or she was, you know, kissing with a significant other, like making out in front of the camera like that. She just was being trans on trans on live, basically. And that was enough for, for um, one or more people, probably more than one person, although one person can, you know, start a bot farm relatively easy, to take the time to get the bots, get the things, and just bombard her chat with nonsense. So it's like... People who want to be harassful, people who want to be jackasses, don't require a lot of incentment to do it, right? That's, you know, if you think this is, that the person doing this is really spoiling things, nine times out of ten people are in the, who want to invade the chat and who want to say, no, you shouldn't do this, or, or call her slurs or whatever, or attack her because she's doing this, right? You know, and there's also a double negative, especially for such gender men. It's like, oh, I hate you doing that, but please tell me more right it's like yeah it's like it's like people have said that in especially the american south which is going to be the bible belt they consume more porn than the rest of america combined right yep because it's never about the actual act it's about control yep you know so there you go so that was a very long rant on essentially a minor change <laughs> in you in, in twitch um Moving on, uh, I haven't seen this game before, but it's it, it's one of those games that seems to be dying pretty quickly. Uh, Destruction All Stars is getting bots because no, not enough people are playing. By Sags Wagon, it was yesterday. Destruction All Stars released on February exclusively for PS5 doesn't seem to have a huge community of players online. So to help improve matchmaking, developers have announced plans to add online bots. The news of bots being added to the game was revealed in Dev Update post on Reddit. In the post, the Dev at Lucid Games laid out this future plans for the online car combat game. But it's planning to add some robots. But the community decides to destruction all sets playing looks at games spread out across the world. We have to peak we have peak camps and load times of players that can be for online matchmaking. Yeah, that's a way of that like, we don't have enough people, period. You know, don't don't blame the spread because people have been doing worldwide um servers for decades now. So yes, you do have highs and lows, but if you can get, you know enough people you know from major markets then you're done that that's you know not not all markets are created legal so i i don't buy that i mean i hate to see a game fail because not enough people play it but on the other hand if it's failing um well let it let it fail i was gonna say yeah that or like maybe maybe you should work harder on uh making sure that um you know, bots aren't buying up all the PlayStations, all the <laughs> PlayStation 5s, and yeah. you know, yell for ridiculous prices, especially when you have a supply shortage. See, now we're seeing the effects of scalping on on the actual industry. Oh, yeah, you allow those people to open, to sell these machines, at, uh, buy them all up to means that your sales are up and you're making the cash up front. But now when you want to make the long-term investment... Of having your games as service have enough players to play well there's not enough ps5s out in the wild for that to be true oops oopsie daisy uh, let's go back to twitch because this is another problem and a little more serious one the twitch dms dmcas just keep on coming uh, by nathan grayson last friday some of you heard this one before the music industry is taking aim at twitch this time to tune up what well, thousand individual claims according to the company twitch solutions so second verse same as the first delete 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 i basically stopped using any commercial music anything any other than uh, than game music and of the game that i'm usually going to stream on my stream yeah. and even then that probably could also be uh you have to be careful not all tracks are made equal by the way so so if they have licensed music in their soundtrack, yeah, that can also uh, trip you up. And an email sent to streamers earlier today, Twitch Spain, that was uh, on Friday, and I got that email. Now, all the claims are 
that all the claims are for VODs, and it believes that music publishers use automated tools to locate them, meaning that they will likely send further notices. You know, that other times this has happened, Twitch recommends that streamers eliminate any old content that might contain offending material. For some reasons, they contribute like chunks of their professional histories. If you know you have unauthorized music on the, or other copyright material in your past fonts or clips, we strongly recommend that you permanently delete anything that contains the material. Twitch wrote, for your remaining VODs, we recommend that you just unpublish all feature and review any content for unauthorized music or other copyright material. Uh, Twitch went to say that if working to mitigate the problem more comprehensively, the solution includes educating creators and providing resources to understand the rules and risks concerning the use of music on Twitch, as well as building new product features such as the ability to unpublish VODs, view your strike count, strike modifications in the creator dashboard, multi-track audio support for OBS, and more. Investing in proactive detection and muting and working with right holders on long-term solutions. Okay, that last one. I know what's going to happen. And I think this is something that the uh, video game, uh, the uh, uh, we're going to see. More. I, mean, I have the feeling this is going to be the compromise. The compromise is that you're going to see, you already, there's some services that do this, but you're going to see basically Sony and, and other big music companies, they're going to sell the rights to either through Twitch or directly to people for music and for very specific ways to do it like okay you can use this music on your youtube video if you pay us a hundred dollars per hour or something like that right uh and it's a 20 they're gonna they're gonna have packages where they can um they're gonna demand payment uh right now it's almost impossible i mean the cost for licensing music even if you use a little bit of it it's a thing that depends on the song it could be in the thousands to tens of thousands of dollars and even if you have 10 grand right now for one song, right, doing that over time, it's impossible. In fact, uh, Miracle Sound, who had put an entire library um, up to be free of use for YouTubers and Twitch streamers, had to, at least on YouTube, go back and put it on their I you know ID uh, ID statement because his music kept being being ID by other you know by bots so yeah um, or the other solution which I don't see YouTube doing but I might see Twitch doing might be have stronger anti bot software you know yeah. uh, which they don't have a lot of you know it's more of the honor system you're. They can detect your bots. If you use bots, they will because about a year ago they kicked out or or, or penalized a lot of uh, streamers who were using bot armies to you know gen up their numbers, right? Um, but um, apparently they can't do that for random bots or or, or especially music bots. I yeah. mean, I think their their controls work more on 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 live streams, but they can't really do that on. Bots, because what the bots, the what the, the bots do is they they basically they just subscribe to to Twitch, right? Uh, you don't have to pay; it's a free service. Uh, subscribe, and um, they scan your your bots, right? Your uh, your video on demand, and that's when they make the strikes, right? They make the the the, the, the they make the alert, which in sends that it's out automatically to Twitch itself. So screening for that, I mean, the thing is. Twitch hasn't found a way to to screen for effectively for for bots. The best they have is a very archaic, horrible system. It's like, are you a robot? Please, you know, put the you know this, decide where all the lamp posts, you know, the, the the pictures with the lamp posts is or the cars or the bus. Yeah, that's a pain in the bus. I hate it, and it actually makes it harder for us streamers to anytime anytime there's a change and you have to log on again. It's like, oh god, no, don't do that. But it doesn't do anything for bots because we're being hit up with bots. I, I, I'm getting a hit at least, and I'm probably getting the least hits. I get hit about twice a stream, two or three times. Hmm. Like, do you want to be famous, bots? Right? You would think those are easy to. I mean, you can filter them out, and I should be recalibrating my filter to filter them out. But I shouldn't have to do that. <laughs> you know what I mean? It should be something yeah. that that Twitch does automatically. But you know, there you go. Uh, moving on, uh, we're over at PC Gamer now. Uh, Angry Total War fans are reviewing Bombing Three Kingdoms by Jody McGregor 17 hours ago. So yesterday, the best-selling game's recent view reviews have dropped by to mostly negative. 
Creative Assembly has announced that it's ending support for Total War Three Kingdoms as a patch 1.71. 1. 1. The response to Total War fans hasn't been great. They claim that bugs and DLC haven't been addressed and are frustrated by a map update that would focus on building on the north of the map promised by Creative Assembly in a blog post from July 2020. Never eventuated. Never eventuated. Uh, they wrote that. Doesn't sound like English to me, but, you know, I could be wrong. Probably am. Uh, in response, there they have begun review bombing Three Kingdoms on Steam. An overall review rating of mostly positive. Positive has dropped to mostly negative in recent reviews, and each Three Kingdoms DLC has now has overwhelming negative recent reviews. They haven't stopped there, with DLC for the still-supported Total War Warhammer 2 also being targeted, at least until fans rallied on Reddit and began leaving positive reviews and mass bringing the ratings back up. On a dev update video, Creative Assembly staff explained that they're moving on to the pre-production of a new game in the same realm as the Three Kingdoms setting. That video currently has 6,200 6, 6, dislikes on YouTube. 6,200 dislikes. Uh, yeah. Games of service. Strikes again. I mean, even if it's a single player with DLC. Yeah. yeah. And how, you know... How much of a little room for maneuver um, we uh, fans have for to express their emotions? I mean, uh, furthermore, we have uh, a news from uh, um, uh, um, Fallout for the Fallout world. They cancel Fallout Van Buren, uh, which is supposed to be Fallout the Three. Fallout Three, you know, Fallout Three, which elements of that made it to Fallout New Vegas. And I'll leave it at that. It's being remade as a New Vegas mod. It's called Revelation Blues for legal reasons. Van Buren was a cut name for a sequel to Fallout 2, being de de developed by Black Isle Studios until he was canceled in 2003. Information about the lost Fallout 3 that could have been have appeared online in the years since, lending, in, in, lending it a mythic quality about, uh, among Fallout fans. A group of modders are currently dedicated to creating Van Buren on New Vegas mod called Revo Revelation, not Revolution, Revelation Blues, since NXL currently owns the Van Buren name. We'll stay faithful to the original Vibrian story as much as possible, says the project name on Nexus Mods, and in the future, we plan to add in a large number of customized features. Uh, as, as of now, the project is still a uh, work in, in progress. You can download a, play a demo of Revel Revelation Blues from the page right now. Reino Van Buren will have been set in the year 2253 and cast players as escaped prisoners roaming the America Southwest while pursued by robotic prison guards, whose apocalyptic version of places like Denver and the Grand Canyon would have been would have featured. Uh, parts of Van Buren were recycled into Fall New Vegas and Radio Game. Joshua, Joshua Grant from the Honest Hearts would have been one of your companions, and you would encounter Caesar Legions while traveling to Hoover Dam. The models working on Revelation Blues are planned to ignore the version in New, in New Vegas and won't treat FNV as canon. In any way. Mm -hmm. Also, Modern Creative Van Buren Fallout Good called Fallout Yesterday and a project aiming to make it a standalone Unity game. And I would play that as a standalone Unity game, see what, what it was, but I'm not like, going to get like a Like a, so almost like a what could have been game. Yeah. But I would not engage with it in the form of, uh, you know, yeah, um, Canon or, or Fallout New Vegas in any yeah. shape. <laughs> yeah, I'm not doing that. More modern news, modern news, not modern. <laughs> a modder is reviving the Lost Wolfenstein enemy territory single player campaign by Jonathan Balding. That was 21 hours ago over at PC Gamer. Uh, Wolfenstein enemy territory was one of the greatest great multiplayer shooters of its day, delivering what was the time neatly class based, objective based gameplay. Came off the back of a successful single player return to Castle Wolfenstein, but it was multiplayer only, at least it was at the time. It had an unfinished single player campaign cut. During development, long considered loss, with recent arrival of Wolfenstein enemy territory by modders, one man, William Four Four, F A U R E, or Four. Uh, sorry, I apologize, Sir William. And bringing back the that dream, this falls on the heels of major mod project called Real R T C W that remade Return of Castle Wolfenstein itself. Uh, it's the, the the modder is taking the six enemy territory maps and making them into both single player and cooperative experience. He's not a stranger to modding the game either because he's he's the person behind the extensive real RTCW mod called the Dark Army Uprising, an official sequel to RCTW story. Given the trailer above, which shows not just a size of game from several maps but an extended look at gameplay on a D-Day level, it's coming along 
nicely. So if you want to go back into the history of Wolfenstein, uh, my Laban, uh, then you might want to check this out. I always found that great. Every time you kill the Nazis, it's like, my Laban. And they say that over and over and over and over again. <laughs> yeah. If 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 uh, voice actors uh, were paid by every time that, that they someone sent a game in, in a line, they would be you know even if they were paid like a cent uh, per time, they would just be you know billionaires by this point. But you know that's how the system works at all. Uh, Sierra Entertainment original creators might be making something new by Ruth Cassidy over at PC Gamer. Kath and Roberta Williams are working on a game that will excite traditional Sierra fans, according to Facebook. On Saturday, YouTuber Space Quest Historian shared that Ken and Roberta Williams, founders of Sierra Entertainment, and for people who didn't get the clue about Space Quest, the old Sierra Entertainment, now it's part of Activision, and they've done a couple of things with it, but the old Sierra Entertainment was Space Quest, um, another King Quest series, Police Quest, uh, Lizzie Shoot Larry, you know, point and click adventures. Uh, and they were big in the 80s and early 90s, but then, you know, they faded into obscurity as gaming moved on. Although, if you want to see point and click and, and adventure novels, especially of the more adult variety, Chapel One here is uh, always <laughs> willing to put them up on, on Twitch and particularly YouTube because he has to censor them so that he doesn't fall into the hot tub black hole. So. <laughs> Yeah. I mean, it sort of it sort of is like its own little hot tub. It's just mm-hmm. it's it's a hot tub that's uh strategically placed bubbles and stuff. Yeah. So uh, as the article says, Sierra Table was originally founded in 1979 as online systems, then Sierra Online, and is mostly recognized as King Quest and Gabriel Knight series. Sierra is also famous publisher of Half Life, the game which gave rise to Valve as we know it today. The brand still is under Activision to republish some of their older games. After a serious acquisition emerges, but the Williams have both left the company by 1997. Uh, especially Roberta Williams was one of the the writers mm-hmm. uh, and one of the the the, big, the biggest um, uh, you know female developers uh, of all time. So she was very famous back in the 1980s, uh, especially uh, and there are other people as well, right? Because even even in games that she didn't directly. Uh, make because her and her husband were the owners of Sierra Line. They had a, a big, big hand into it. Uh, we're gonna. This is a follow up, sort of, to story we talked about about two two weeks ago. Uh, this is from uh, GameIndustry.biz. IGN Game Informer Express retracts support for Palestinian civilians. Gaming sites pull stories compiling charity links for victims. Similar posts from Kotaku and Gamespot Gamespot remain up. Uh, Essentially, what's happened, and, and I'm going to link to this, but there are other places you can go and follow the story, especially on Kotaku. They have me follow the the, the, uh, the news very closely. Is that what's happened in um, when it comes to to this was that during the beginning of the hostilities, or n- new round of hostilities uh, between uh, the Israeli government and the Palestinian you know, civilian, mostly Palestinians. Uh, and I'm, I'm I'm trying to be as judicious as possible. I have a position on this, and I'm going to say it. I'm, I consider myself to be largely pro-Palestinian, but I also want to make this news as clear as possible. Make it about you know the news itself, not my personal opinion. So I'm not going to deny my my position. I'm just going to say that I'm speaking in these terms, mostly hopefully for clarity's sake. Several uh, games outlets uh, basically stated not so much support. For any you know one of the combatants, but rather they pointed out uh, uh, charity uh, places where people could help the victims of the violence, particularly children, particularly Palestinian children. Then what happened was that their bosses, bosses AGN International, said and other places started saying, "No, you can't do that." And in fact, even there was a time where IGN Israel sort of shot back at. IGN, I think it's IGN America, Europe, saying we condone this. We don't condone this. This is, you know, this is horrible. We don't, we don't afford this. So it became a, a big problem, right? Mm-hmm. And I think this is a good starting to the leading of why 
video game industry is so afraid of yeah. being political, right? Yeah, and and we did cover this when it originally happened. I I was even able to find the uh the original article that got pulled on the Wayback Machine, which is it it's benign. It's just like, hey, this horrible violence is happening over here. Here's some charities that you know, if you feel inclined, like that could help if you want to do something. Like these are great charities that are helping out the victims and stuff, and there was nothing to it. There's like. I, I would hardly barely even call that political. It, it's more humanitarian than anything. Yeah. But again, it makes it so that all things are in fact political, you know, whether one likes it or not. Uh, and so... Then I, then I even make that joke. Oh, politics at my video game news. Well, pretty much. Um, and so we go to the 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 meat of it in some news here. Uh, back to Kotaku and also Far Cry. Uh, Far Cry, let's start with, with PC Gamer. Far Cry 6 is in political statement on Cuba. Rally director says the island of Yara was inspired by Cuba, but Navid Cava, Cavara, Cavari said it's not meant as a commentary on what's actually happening there. Okay. Uh, and this is a statement, you know, uh, quoting uh Mr. Cavari, uh, when we talk about guerrillas, you think of guerrillas in the 1950s and 60s who actually went down there, Cuba, to speak to actual guerrilla fighters who fought back then, and then we just really fell in love with their stories. Um, and then the, the uh, and this, there's another quote right here. Revolution is a complex, and people you're going to engage with are also complex. You, I use this line of philosophy, which told every that every character has their own heartbeat, you just have to find it, Kavari said. We have set this melting pot of no additional complexity that we've tried to strengthen into the gameplay and the story. So tonally, it sort of already existed, but for us, it thematically, and I find that into Guerrilla Fantasy felt pretty natural. Um, I mean, it seems actually, at least on the surface, um, this seems to be kind of an, an answer to Far Cry 5 because one of the things that was being said about Far Cry 5 was that while they were saying that they were not being political, they were in favor of potentially right wing militias, you know, and which is ironic because it's just white wing yeah, militias. militias and cults, which then kind of they were because the story, I'm spoiling Far Cry 5, the bad guys win. No, no matter what you do, the bad guys win, right? The, so the bad guys were right? Question yeah. mark. No, no, literally, and then literally they made a half sequel, a shorter sequel in a post-apocalyptic America, where you the the player character from the the previous game, Far Cry Five, appears as a completely shrouded character because you play a male or female character, even though you don't have any voice lines, and they literally tell you, yes, the bad guys in Far Cry Five were right. And this is why I'm doing this, because they basically become a vigilante in this new world. Um, whether they actually are a villain or not, I didn't bother playing the games because like, my stomach couldn't take it. I already wasted $60 on Far Cry 5. Uh, and yes, that's an opinion, opinion I'm, I'm, I'm sticking to. Uh, so then we have Ubisoft says, Ubisoft says, ladies games, insert name, isn't political. So that is why I said. Uh, today I showed us some new gameplay for an upcoming insert game genre, game insert name. The footage shows the game setting and story seems to be politically charged and politically filled with commentary about insert current events. However, as usual, Ubisoft has been quick to explain that no, this game is not in fact political. We are all mistaken once again. Uh, it's, and, it's, just, it's just like a fun shooty shooty bang bang time. Yeah, it doesn't want to make a political statement with this game. But you are making a, a political statement. And if you go back to that other article... The the, uh, the the person being quoted says, well, it shows our sensibilities, right, and our, our sympathy. So you are making it. And, yeah, we could go back. We, so we've done videos on this before. We said everything's political and it's nonsense talking about a political. Let's talk about supposedly this, especially PC gaming says, like, oh, we're using this as inspiration for our storytelling, right? Again, I stated that I'm not a storytelling first kind of person myself. And I'm, uh, I'm arg I always argued that stories should be written for the game, not the other way around. That's my argument. Not that there shouldn't be any stories, or stories are not important, but that, you know, priorities. Ironically, in this situation, they seem to be following that. But that 
I think if you take that line, is it's incomplete. And I think people who might say, well, then look at Far Cry. You know, this is what you get when you talk about not doing proper storytelling. It's like, hold on. Hold on a minute. I'm strong many people, but I'm sure somebody would say that. Not many people say. Most people like say, you're, you're crazy anyway. We don't care what you say. So it's like, okay, never mind. You know, you're wrong. Okay, fine. Uh, but let's say, when I say, and this is from a personal perspective, when I say write uh a story for the game that you're making. That doesn't mean you make a half ass story as an excuse necessarily for a shooting gallery, right? Yeah. Because one of the problems um, you should create a, f- if you're going to say story is important and it's part of this, you should go for it. You should go full bore in the story, right? And let the story, you know, the, the story take you where they want to go, right? Uh, as long as it's you know it's it's always in the purpose of supporting the game, you don't have to shortchange your story to do so, right? There's no reason to do that, and it seems that Far Cry is like, no, no, we want a shooting gallery, and we want necessarily evil people that can be blasted, shot, you know, you know, kicked, etc. So we're gonna make them, you know, dictators, cultists. You know, right wing nut jobs, uh, et cetera, right? Uh, slavers in the case of Far Cry 3, because literally take slaves and stuff like that. But we're not going to take it to the point that where the story goes, right? That, uh, that the, we, I mean, it kind of creates a, a very, you know, a, uh, you know, ludo narrative dissonance in the sense like your character doing what they do is often seen as positive but the npcs they're doing the same thing that you're doing fighting alongside you giving you missions to kill people etc supporting you they're seeing as wrong and i think that's the key here that they're not willing to commit to a political thing they want to balance it out you're you as a player allowed to do whatever you want but then you know, the comes of the game but they want to say oh by, by, by the way we realize that this stuff like you know you know, assassinating people and they're like it's wrong, and so we have to make the NPCs look wrong for doing it, right? I'm like, that that doesn't make you're not supporting the gameplay, you know? You're not, oh, you know? Oh no, it's it's totally wrong that the those NPCs over there are are hunting down, you know, the last rhinos of the of the savanna, but you can you on the other hand can run up to a rhino and kill it and gut it and make a pelt out of it and it just fine and no one comments on that <laughs> and how wrong yeah. that is yeah but you're the player character so you're right it that, reminds that was looking at you funny <laughs> it reminds me of bioshock the last bioshock game is like oh yeah you can horribly mangle and kill these you know white americans in this sort of the you know you know white supremacy utopia in the sky in the skies literally in the clouds and mangle them horribly and fight police officers and all that. But then, and you can do so as a white man, by the way. But then when the black folk that they literally have been slaving, enslaving and um, have been treating a less than human, rebel and take the fight to their white slavers, right? And owners and masters, then that's too much. If you give them power, they turn as bad as the other side, right? What There's, about both sides? Right. It's, you know, it's like, it kind of defeats the purpose because it's like, either you're saying that, and basically, to me, it sounds like you're saying, don't play this game. <laughs> because if what you're doing is so horrible within the context of the game, the story telling you, this is something people shouldn't so, do, so but they encourage you to do it. This one? Uh, I believe that you're a guerrilla fighter. Uh, in the home, uh, in the country, island country of Yara. And uh, let's look at uh, this Google premise. Premise of FC6. Uh, plot, welcome to, uh, this is from uh, Far Cry, the uh, uh, fandom, uh, Far Cry fandom, uh, wiki. Uh, an upcoming use of game, the sixth numerical game in uh, da, 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 the plot. Welcome to Yara, a tropical paradise frozen in time as Zotero Yara and Anton, not Antonio, Anton Castillo is intent on restoring his nation back to its former glory by any means with his son Diego following his bloody footsteps. The ruthless oppression has ignited a revolution. Uh, fight for freedom. Play as Danny Rojas, 
a local Yara and become a guerrilla fighter to liberate the nation. Yara turned apart fight against Anton's troops, like the Fire Cry player of the mm, guerrilla firepower, play makes you weapons, vehicles, and amigos, the new thanks, thanks for hire, uh, to burn the theoretical regime to the ground. Um, so you're playing as, uh, as a, as a, uh, a freedom yeah. fighter. A freedom a fighter, freedom yeah. Fighter, it looks, sounds like. So this island is under occupation and you're trying to liberate it. Well, no, actually it's under dictatorship. Uh, Yara, dictator. it, it, you know, it's, uh, Castillo is, uh, is oh. the di dictator uh, and you're trying to liberate, right? Hmm. Uh and also, I why, think it's, why, why don't they just accept the politics of the of the dictator and live for happily ever after? Like, isn't the fact that they're they're trying to be they're trying to liberate their country from a dictator mean make it like automatic political? Why do they disagree with this of this dictator? What about the stick the way that this dictator runs this little island nation that they're against that they need to they feel like the need to. Gra uh, grab arms and rise up against. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> um, and it's it's that kind of thing. I mean, it's and I guess this is another thing we talked about before: is the difference between being uh, video games don't seem to be able to do nuance because the moment you go, okay, this is a nuance situation, that seems too too gray for video games, right? To so everything turns into this gray mush. I don't know if it's going to be this way for Far Cry 6. I'm not going to play. I'm going to watch other people play, but I'm not going to buy it. I'm not. I mean, we're going to get to that in a moment as well. Uh, well, I'm not going to do that. But it's like, I mean, there was uh, the Outer Worlds were like that. Oh, you're fighting against the ultra-capitalist, you know, Gilded Age space capitalist. Da, da, da. But your solution is to be a middle-of-the-ground reformer because it's all about the people. If you get the right people in charge, then you're good. And it's like, but this is a system which is but, was established on Earth by the power. You know, many people. It is not just a matter of changing one or two people in charge. That's not enough, right? No, uh, so, but you're still going to make people work nine to five, or five mm -hmm. days a week. Yeah, it's just a matter of getting the right them people. The, of, the means of production. Yeah, you, you know, so the thing is like, oh, it's all about. Uh, I'm going to say this. It's it, it fails to capture the idea that it's. Um, <sighs> they don't go all the way. In fact, one of the things that happens in, in, in the outer worlds is that the revolutionaries are seen as just as either as uh, brutal or as clueless or just being or just being fake. Like there's one guy you talk to, he's just a fake revolutionary. He's just he's actually working for the corporation. Okay, that's that makes sense because that actually does happen. But then you talk to another guy who's like, no, no. I am both stupid because I talk about slogans and all that, and I'm doing this because actually I committed a, essentially a, a, a mass murder, and I'm using this movement to cover the fact that I committed mass murder. <laughs> so the solution is not to defeat the corporation. The solution is to get the second in command to talk to the person who is a more liberal-minded leader of this corporation, even though this corporation is still doing a lot of crappy things and treating people badly, but he's an innovator, so we get them together working, and everything's going to be okay, right? It's reform, right? Not revolution. Um, in fact, one of the things about the other worlds is uh, the, it doesn't really get comment on, um, you don't even get a chance to comment on it, is that how much the corporations hype up the, the rebellion, right? There's these forces like, oh, they're, they're going to smash us, and we have to smash them first, that they're in a state of war against all these rebellions, and there's really barely any rebellion anywhere, you know? Okay. It's just barely, barely it, anything. It, it's you know? the whole like, oh no, like you know, Black Lives Matter is burning down cities. Like they still make that claim, like oh my god, like these cities were all burned down to the ground. Like they're like you know, I don't know, Seattle is completely like off the map now. <laughs> or Supposedly. oh no, Antifa, that's an actual, actual threat, an actual organization, the war, mm -hmm. they're coming for you. Like there, there's rioting in the streets and constant like gunfights that happen absolutely nowhere. Yeah, I mean it's um, and it's this. I mean, and then going back again to to uh, to the to the idea that this actually hurts game quality because you're not willing. 
you're creating you're creating this sort of the gray morass. I don't know if they're actually going to do this in Far Cry Six. I hope they don't. I doubt it because it's Ubisoft again. It's something I'm not going to talk about much yet. Uh, but it's like, oh, we're going to use these. You're using these hard button issues as hooks, but then you don't deliver, right? You don't you take you don't take any moral stances because. You know, that might get you criticism, like, you know, getting your article, uh, you know, banned, you know, shadow ban or RGN or whatever, right? Or, uh, you know, get angry gamers saying, oh, you're being political, being you're making a political statement that I don't agree with, right? Um, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, right? Um, and it's like you're undercutting yourself, right? Because... The story, it, the story is always going to end up the same. It's going to end up in this sort of wishy washy. Well, we do the best we can, and and oh eh, no, yeah. Oh, I guess your princess is in another castle. Time to go rescue her. Uh, no, your princess is in another uh, enemy camp. I guess you better go keep going to go rescue her. Oh, you did it! Yay! The end. Oh, um, another game, another Far Cry game. Oh, look, the princess has been kidnapped. Yeah, I mean, it's the same. Oh, you could you could make a a a narrative about deliberately, I and mean, you're doing that where that you know that revolutions ultimately are tragedies because much of the time they fail. But there's another aspect of this as well. I think that doesn't get commented on, which is one reason why it has to be apolitical, is that in many of these situations, although the Far Cry series sometimes touch on it, they have the the CIA guy. Kind of interfering, so it's it's there, right? Especially in Far Cry, in Far Cry Two, and Far Cry Three, he was there. He comes back in Far Cry Five. I didn't see him in Far Cry Four. I don't remember. But for example, oh hey, why is it that the revolution failed? Well, it could be because there's CIA agents who are actually assassinating people and bribing others, and the corporations are there, right? You, you know, you never really see that, right? You never see, for example, corporate executives with. With, with you know carrying uh, bags or, or or suitcase fulls of local currency, going like, well, listen, uh, I know you want this little war, but if you want to do business with us, you know you gotta you gotta you can't be so revolutionary anymore. You know what I'm saying? Here's a a million pesos for you, right? It's like, okay, fine, sure, you bought me, right? Or that that for example, a threat might be if you're doing something in Cuba, fictional Cuba, the threat of a foreign nation invading you if you actually win the revolution, right? Like, oh, yeah, we got a revolution. Oh, yeah, we got news that a neighboring superpower has decided to invade us because they don't like to have our leader here, right? Um, stuff like that, right? Oh, and also can make the situation that, yeah, some people are fakes, right? The, that uh, the the act of rebelling can corrupt people, like the violence can corrupt people. You can do that, actually. But that's too nuanced. That's too complicated. And it hits too close to the mark. Right, it's like you know, your fellow corporate co corporations are not going to size other fellow corporations. You know, Ubisoft's not going to make a, 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 a something that is actually criticized, say Chevron, for example, necessarily. You know, they're like, eh, you know, that's too close to 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 the mark. And then, of course, we're talking about Ubisoft, which oh hey, Far Cry Six is coming out, and this is new games. Yeah, what about all that sexual harassment business and uh, you know, a sexual assault and even possibly rape that happened the last five six seven years oh we got rid of the people so we're good you know they when they go they got the golden or platinum parachutes they're great you know no problem we're done with that it's like uh no no you're not <laughs> you know uh i mean like i said uh far cry 5 literally ends one of the endings of far cry 5 one of them and one of the endings is brainwashing kind of akin to slavery and the other one is rape Mm -hmm. Like I'm, I'm gonna spoil the ending to Far Cry Five, so you don't have to waste some money on it. Regardless of your gender, and you only get to choose two in the game, uh, you end up, um, in a handcuff to a bed in a bunker with the bad guy, who then delivers a Adam and Eve style uh, speech to you, as in we're gonna repopulate the world, and I go like. Uh, that can only mean one thing, and I'm tied to a. I'm the one tied to the bedpost here, on a bed. Oh God, no! 
And you can say, oh, you're uh, you know reading too much. Well, oh, yeah, this is the same company that in the middle of Far Cry 3, you go and you, your character gets drugged, it's a male character, and when they wake up from their fever dream, they're tied to a, a you know a stone slab and they're getting you know having sex copulating with one of the NPCs right and they're literally grinding writing you and it's well you don't actually see from the camera angle but they're topless from the you know from you know from the up and they're just having sex yeah. with you like uh, did I consent to this and then the characters say oh yeah I'm totally in love with this woman now I'm like what yeah it's like oh I didn't get to pick my character it's like i didn't say i wanted to what and by the way she's the one that drugs you because what happens is you walk up to her and she goes like blows a sort of like pixie dust in your face and you're like oh drug and you have this big fight with this you know big boss boss monster snake dragon whatever and then when you snap out of it apparently you've you know gone unconscious and they strap you to this table and well you know she did whatever she wanted to do in front of a bunch of people as well. Like entire followers are seeing you having sex with her, right? So this is kind of ceremony thing. Which also, by the way, it's there's the racism and 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 you know oriental orientalism of these island people who are going crazy. And which reminds me, I'm gonna have to tackle that in soon in Mass Effect. Oh, Jacob, Jacob, it's not your fault. It's whoever wrote that that uh, that your loyalty mission. I'm gonna roast that to hell and back, but it's kind of like that, but more explicit like you literally are in the middle of and a participant of the sexual assault and it's your oh, character who's been... you're you the audience is supposed to be a cis a straight male that's supposed to enjoy this look look sex a woman yeah. is a woman is willing to jump on your bones like yeah like yeah, I know. Which kind of shows where Ubisoft and its writers were coming from. I hope they have new writers now. I mean, they changed the, 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 the creative director, so hopefully we'll see this in future games. But still, uh, we're not trying to be political. Yeah, I mean, it doesn't work. It, it, it's it's weak sauce stuff. That's what it is. It's weak sauce. It's, that's my com- ultimate my complaint is like, I mean, if you were the exception to the rule, maybe we're like, okay, fine, but your stories are not really supporting your gameplay, uh, and you're also not being great storytellers either, because you're not telling great stories, because great stories are willing to take the risk. They're willing to go to, you know, whatever the position might be, but they're willing to go there, right? They're willing, you know, Handmaid's Tale is powerful, because we get to see what happens in a world where right-wing conservatives take over, you know, after sort of post-apocalyptic America and and what they they implement on women, right? You may not agree with it. You might think it's an exaggeration, but she was willing to go there, right? Um, and same thing with horrible stuff like, which is horrible. I know I want to mention it, but the Turner Diaries. Hmm. Which, by the way, I don't counsel anybody to read it because I, I read it. It's you don't you don't want to go there it's a horrible street but uh you know i mean you have good examples and horrible examples but at least you go there right you go there you take your chances and if you're gonna make your story about revolution and yeah you can be silly as well right i think that's one of the things about yakuza yakuza in many ways well they have another thing about order and and chaos (laughs) the cat no, that's me. <laughs> <laughs> but they're willing to show you, you know, that if you make choices, there are consequences, right? And 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 people earn their redemptions and they die and stuff like that, right? It's uh, at the end of the entire series, you know, the, the meme and main character goes to prison at least a couple of times. So because you know, that's what happens. You go to prison, you you, you know, you make a crime, you know, you commit a crime, you're gonna go to prison, right? Uh, and they show you how horrible the prison system can be. Right, that even though these are criminals, you still have sadistic, you know, uh, you know, police measures and all that. So, and that people are there for greed, are greedy and willing to do horrible things, right? And yet they're complex and compelling human being characters, right? Uh, even though they do horrible things, right? Very interesting. They have one character that kills, literally kills a woman in front of you to show how much power he has, and yet he doesn't become a cartoon. Mm-hmm. Because you do have this fight against him, he's like, "Yeah, I realized that I, I was I was full of shit, right? Uh, no, and uh, it has a little a little bit of a redemption, right? And it ends up prison anyway, right? But 
but there's that, right? Uh, when you take your stories to the to where they they lead you to, then you have great stories. So why why go like eh, we're not really being political because we don't want people not to buy our games? Yeah, if 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 news that your co your company your the top leadership of your company engage in repeated sexual assault, abuse, and and exploitation of their workers, and we're able to get away with it scotch free, doesn't dissuade people from buying your games. I don't know if being political is going to be a problem anyway. Just say. Just... <sighs> oh, Ubisoft. Uh, Good thing I'm never going to buy a game from you ever again. Yeah. So there we have it. <laughs> Actually, we uh, ended up under time this time around. Uh, so thank you for coming. Chapamon, where can we find you on the interwebs? You can find me at Chapamon pretty much anywhere. I'm Chapamon underscore here on Twitch and Twitter, but I primarily live over on YouTube. Um, I just released uh, a uh, review of a uh, d gay dinosaur or T Rex sex simulator. Uh, you could check it out. It's heavily censored, so it's YouTube friendly. Uh, but yeah, just type in Chapamon, you'll find my content. And of course, you can find me here. Um, I'm streaming now Mass Effect 2 Legendary Edition. Uh, I'm taking it slow. I'm doing all the missions. I'm doing all the planet scanning. So if you think that's boring, eh, I'm sorry, but I'm, 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 I need I need my palladium. I just need it. <laughs> uh, and, uh, and we'll continue with that. Uh, and also, uh, in a couple of hours at uh, 6 o'clock Eastern, I'm going to be over to Ractus Channel to continue with our arena fight over at uh, D&D 5th Edition game Into the Wild Coast. So if you want to join me for that, we have a wonderful group of people that are great role players. Uh, you're more than welcome to show. And, uh, and of course, on Sundays, and we're doing this whenever we can. So thank you, ready for coming. And as always, we'll see you when we see you. <laughs>